My name is Harrison Richardson. I'm a security solutions engineer at Rapid7, and today I'm going to be walking you through a demonstration of Metasploit Pro. Metasploit Pro is the enterprise version of the Metasploit framework, a penetration testing framework that comes inherent with all Kali Linux distributions. Metasploit Pro builds on the functionality of the framework, introducing robust functionality and invaluable automation features that can greatly reduce the time and effort required to complete a comprehensive penetration test. This demonstration is designed to highlight these automation features as well as to act as a baseline of knowledge that can be used throughout the trial of the product. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Here you see the home page of the tool. Unlike the Metasploit framework, which operates through a command line interface, Metasploit Pro uses a graphical user interface to simplify processes and enhance the user experience. At the top, you'll notice four buttons located under the Quick Start Wizard section. These buttons directly connect the user to some of the most commonly used features in the tool. For example, you can use the Quick Pen Test option to automate the basic processes of an engagement from one utility. These processes include scanning, exploitation, and reporting all in one convenient feature. To the right, you'll see the Metasploit Pro Global Tools. This includes a custom segmentation testing target for network segmentation testing, most commonly used with PCI scanning, as well as a payload generator with functionality comparable to MSF Venom. One of the benefits of Metasploit Pro's payload generator is that in addition to creating classical MSF Venom payloads, you can also create dynamic payloads with obfuscated code signatures. It's a similar in functionality to Veil Evasion or FatRat. Metasploit Pro's dynamic payloads can be used to circumvent antivirus software on a target and establish a malicious reverse shell. During an engagement, the majority of work you will do in Metasploit Pro will be accomplished in a project. Projects allow you to set the scope of an engagement as well as control which testers have access to the test data itself. Understanding how to properly configure a project is crucial to ensuring the automated exploitation features of Metasploit Pro do not stray outside of the scope agreed upon prior to the penetration test. To create a project, select the New Project button on the Project Listing toolbar. You can also edit and delete projects from this toolbar, as well as search for a specific project in the list. When creating a new project, you will first be asked to provide a name as well as an optional description. These fields are operational and will not have any effect on the functionality of the tool in any way. Next, enter the network range that defines the agreed-upon scope of the penetration test. This can be anything from a single IP to a list of Class A subnets. If you're not sure what the scope of the test is, it is highly recommended that you reach out and confirm this prior to the beginning of any testing. In addition, the Restrict to Network Range checkbox can be selected to ensure no scanning or exploitation occurs on assets outside of this network range. Due to Metasploit Pro's extensive automation capabilities, it is also strongly recommended that this box be checked unless given explicit permission by the client to test outside of the initial scope. Finally, access controls can be implemented to ensure only specific users have access to the project. This can be done by selecting a project owner from the drop-down menu and adding any additional users in the table below. The overview page summarizes at a high level the current state of a specific project. This includes identified hosts, services, and vulnerabilities on that host, identified credential pairs, sessions, and much more. Put simply, the overview page illustrates the current attack surface of a project and can be used regularly throughout an engagement to quickly identify valuable information. It is important to remember that Metasploit Pro has several automated features that aid in building out this attack surface. This often occurs throughout the penetration testing process, not just when running scans against a host. 
With this in mind, it's a good idea to return to the overview page often during an engagement to track all possible attack vectors. If you're feeling stuck, return to the overview page and it may show you that a new vulnerability or applicable module has been identified. The overview page is divided into two sections. On the top, the dashboard provides a graphical representation of various metrics. This includes the most common operating systems and network services, as well as project activity over the past 24 hours, and the status of identified hosts. The system status shows the progress made and level of access achieved on the asset. Examples are discovered, looted, cracked, and shelled. Below the dashboard, the overview page represents more granular metrics regarding host discovered and the attack surface on that host. In addition, links within this section can be used to access specific features within the project, such as scanning, exploitation, and brute force attacks. Testers can use the information provided here to identify possible attack methodologies and quickly execute the tools required. Now that we have an understanding of the user interface, let's look at the ways to bring data into the tool. We have several ways to discover hosts in Metasploit Pro, the simplest of which is to perform a targeted nmap scan. To kick off an nmap scan, select the Scan button under Discovery on the Overview page. This will bring up the new Discovery Scan page, where you can make changes to the scan configuration based on your specific use case. Although many of the options here will be self-explanatory, I want to take a minute to highlight a few fields that can have a major impact on your scan. The first of these is the Target Addresses field. This is where you will enter the IP addresses you would like to scan. Keep in mind that if you selected Restrict Network Range when creating the project, Metasploit Pro will only scan IP addresses that are included in the project scope. Even though MMAP scans are non-intrusive, Metasploit Pro uses a specifically crafted MMAP scan with additional scripts that may be outside the rules of engagement for some penetration tests. It's important to make sure you are only scanning assets within the scope of the engagement. You can also explicitly exclude IP addresses under the advanced options. The next field I want to call out is the port scan speed. This allows you to select the speed the nmap beacons are sent using a sliding scale. For engagements that involve circumventing detection systems like an IDS or IPS, it may be necessary to set the port scan speed at a lower rate to avoid setting off any alerts. The final field I want to mention is the Custom nmap Arguments field. Although Metasploit Pro does use a specifically crafted nmap argument, you are always welcome to add additional arguments to the command. Some examples may be spoofing the IP address with attack S or showing verbose results with attack V. The full command can be viewed in the tasks section after the scan has been initiated. Once you have made all the necessary changes to the scan configuration, you can start the scan by clicking Launch Scan at the bottom of the page. In addition to performing an in-map scan, testers can also leverage Metasploit Pro's native integration with Insight VM or Nexpos, Rapid7's flagship vulnerability management solutions, to enumerate vulnerabilities and build out an attack surface. To do this, Simply select the Nexpose Scan button from the Overview page. This button will take you to the Import Data section of the tool. From here, you will first need to pair Metasploit Pro to your Insight VM or Nexpose console by selecting Configure a Nexpose console next to the green plus. In order to successfully complete this process, you will need to enter the IP address, port number, and authentication credentials assigned to your Insight VM or Nexpose console. In most cases, the port number for Insight VM or Nexpose will be 3780. Finally, assign a name to this console to properly identify it and complete the pairing by clicking the Connect to Nexpose button at the bottom of the page. 
after the Nexpo's console has been successfully paired, simply select the site you would like to import from the list provided and complete the process by clicking the Import Data button at the bottom right-hand side of the page. Metasploit Pro can also import the results of several other vulnerability scanners. A complete list of compatible third-party scanners can be found at metasploit.help.rapid7.com slash docs slash importing data listed below. No matter how you choose to enumerate your target, the majority of work you will do within the project will take place on the analysis page. This page not only provides you with the basic tools needed to identify and run Metasploit modules, but also stores any valuable data that has been collected throughout the penetration test. The analysis page consists of two toolbars above a list of identified hosts. Moving from the top to the bottom, the first toolbar provides you with actions you can take against your targets, including performing additional scanning, running specific Metasploit modules, executing a brute force attack, or utilizing Metasploit Pro's automated exploitation to identify and exploit known attack vectors. The bottom toolbar, on the other hand, provides a wealth of information that has been collected from your targets. As you continue to conduct testing, you will see that these tabs fill with valuable information regarding services and vulnerabilities identified, valuable data pulled from the target, and even a network topology diagram to help visualize the target infrastructure and plan a strategic lateral movement throughout the network. We will return to this section throughout the demonstration after the targets have been successfully exploited. Once you have enumerated your target, it's time to exploit. Metasploit Pro offers several options for ways to run Metasploit modules depending on the level of automation you'd like to utilize. Since the goal of this demo is to highlight the effectiveness of Metasploit Pro's automation features, I will be using the automated exploitation function found at the top toolbar on the analysis page. This feature automatically builds out an attack plan based on the information gathered on the target, including vulnerabilities, services, credential pairs, hashes, etc. After clicking the Exploit button, you will be redirected to the Automated Exploitation Configuration page. Here, you can begin by ensuring the correct target addresses have been populated in the Input field at the top of the page. Below that, you can select the minimum reliability from the drop-down menu. This automatically configures two very important metrics. First, the success rate of the module, and second, what are the chances the module will knock anything over? Modules that include possibly disruptive processes like a denial of service, brute forcing, or buffer overflow attacks will only be used with a reliability rating of normal or lower. To be safe, I recommend starting with great or excellent, to avoid any unwanted disruptions on the target. The button below the minimum reliability rating allows you to expand the advanced options, giving the tester much more granularity in their control of the automated exploitation feature. Many of these options should be self-explanatory, but there are a few features I want to highlight before moving forward. Under Payload Settings, the Payload Type Selector allows you to select which type of shell you are attempting to establish on your target. I recommend starting with the Meterpreter shell even against Linux assets, but it can be a good idea to run additional exploitation using either a command shell or a PowerShell payload. If the Meterpreter shell fails, it's possible in some cases to get a less robust shell on the target and utilize post-exploitation modules to convert that shell to a full Meterpreter shell. These less robust shells can also be very useful for gathering information about your target and identifying new possible attack vectors. In addition, take note to several different checkboxes under the Exploitation section and Payload Settings section. These can allow you to dial in your exploitation as well as obfuscate your efforts to circumvent security controls. Once you have the automated exploitation settings configured, simply press the Exploit button on the bottom right of the screen to kick off the process. While that is running, I will also quickly repeat the process using a command shell instead of a interpreter shell. If Metasploit Pro is able to establish a shell on the target, you will see a small number appear 
to notate the number of sessions successfully established through the automated exploitation process. Since we are attacking two metasploitable boxes, the remote code execution should only take a few minutes. Keep in mind we are trying to force software and hardware to act in a way that it's not supposed to, and it's possible for an attack to fail once and be successful on the next attempt. It is strongly recommended that you run multiple automated exploitation attempts before confirming that a vulnerability is not exploitable. After the automated exploitation is complete, navigate to the Sessions tab. Any successful shells will be listed under the active sessions. Here you can see which target was exploited, the type of shell, and the attack module used to establish the session. Clicking on the session number will automatically take you to that session's page and provide you with the list of actions you can now take that the shell has established for you. Every session will include a list of available actions based on the type of shell the session is using and where the shell lives. These actions will allow you to gather information about the target, access the file system, and open a CLI for that shell. You also may have the option to set up a VPN or proxy pivot allowing you to move laterally through the target network. When I open the command shell, you can see that we have all the functionality of an interpreter shell and now have full control over the asset. Finally, the bottom section of the sessions page provides you with a list of additional information about that session, as well as post-exploitation modules that can be used to further exploit internal vulnerabilities and potentially get privilege escalation. The first step to configuring the Collect System Data tool is to select which active sessions you want to attempt the collection process through. Although you have the option to point your collection through individual shells, in most cases it's best to simply use any active shell that you have connected. Even if you think there's nothing valuable that can be pulled from that certain shell's location, you may be surprised at what Metasploit can find, and there's often little downside to running the collection process. Along the same vein, testers have the ability to narrow their search down to specific file types. While this can be useful when trying to move quietly through the target network, for our purposes and for this demo, I will be collecting everything I can from the target. After you have selected the appropriate settings, you can begin the collection process by clicking the Collect System Data at the bottom right side of the page. This will kick off a new task and redirect you to the CLI for that process. After the task is complete, you can view the results by navigating back to the Analysis page and selecting Captured Data from the bottom toolbar. As you can see, Metasploit Pro was able to leverage both the interpreter and command shell functions to gather a wealth of information including environmental variables, ARP and routing tables, netstat data, etc., as well as files valuable to privilege escalation such as the etc slash password and etc slash shadow. At this point, I now have full control of my target assets and have been able to collect more than enough data to provide a comprehensive report to the client. While Metasploit Pro does provide the tester with features that allow him or her to directly target specific vulnerabilities, my hope is that this demonstration effectively showed the benefit of the tool's automation features. As you saw, I was able to compromise my targets with very little effort. This is where Rapid7 customers see the greatest return on investment for Metasploit Pro. Penetration testers are able to complete a complex penetration test in a very short amount of time, freeing them up to engage with more targets over a shorter period of time. Since nearly all penetration testers come at a high price to organizations, this increase in productivity directly translates into decreased security spending for internal red teams and consultants alike. Thank you very much for your time and attention. If you have any additional questions, please visit rapid7.com/metasploit or reach out to our skilled and knowledgeable sales staff.